Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellist series, we will highlight the McBride Sisters, the largest Black-owned wine company in America. Welcome to Black Excellist. This is where we celebrate Black excellence, achievement, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Robin McBride was 25 years old when she found out she had a sister. She was living in Atlanta and was soon on a plane to New York City to meet Andrea, her long-lost half-sister who was living in New Zealand. By 2005, Robin moved to California to be closer to Andrea and they soon became motivated to start a business after facing discrimination as customers at some wineries. Fear of the unknown did not stop them. Instead, they jumped in feet first and have since built their business into a global brand and the largest Black-owned wine company in the U.S. In this exclusive Black Excellist presentation, we will highlight the McBride sisters, sisters and CEOs. So without further ado, let's get started. After her mom passed away from cancer, Andrea McBride would end up living in a foster care in New Zealand under the impression that she was an only child. But thousands of miles away in Alabama, her estranged father was terminally ill, and as his last dying wish, he asked his family to locate and connect his two daughters. It took years for the family to locate them both, but they finally did. At the age of 16, Andrea was ecstatic when she received a phone call that she had family in America and a sister named Robin, who was eight years her senior, and the two would finally meet in 1999 in what was a life-altering moment. Shortly thereafter, Andrea moved to California to attend USC and to be closer to her sister Robin, who lived in the Bay Area. In the 17 years since that fateful call, Robin McBride and Andrea McBride John would become supportive sisters and faithful friends. They discovered that they both grew up in small agriculture towns known for winemaking, and they were both equally passionate about wine. So, in an effort to build a stronger and long-lasting bond, they went to various wine tastings and vineyard tours. The sisters would frequently meet up halfway along the central coast where wine country was the main backdrop. Although they thoroughly enjoyed each other while visiting many of these wineries, they sometimes left feeling that they did not belong. It felt that they had entered into the old boys club, which was completely true since the majority of the wine industry is run by a very small group of older white wealthy men or long family lineages. 750 Daily, an online magazine covering the business and culture of alcohol, surveyed winery ownership and found that 60% were men and 84% were white. According to Bloomberg, there are more than 8,000 wineries in the country as of 2020, but unfortunately, only 0.1% of them are black-owned. Enter the McBride Sisters Wine Company. Realizing their goals and interests aligned, the dynamic duo decided to start importing wines in 2005 and began creating their own blends in 2009, which debuted in 2015. By spring 2017, the pair developed a really small production, combining their connections in their respective hometowns. The sisters were now importing high-end boutique sustainable wines from both New Zealand and California, under one label, the McBride Sisters Collection. They made a big splash in the industry, but part of the reason that the McBride sisters were able to ignite a movement is due to their mission to transform the industry, making wine accessible for everybody. To date, the burgeoning California company has grown into what is not only the largest black-owned wine company in the United States, but one of the most inclusive, accessible, socially aware, and sustainable. The size of the U.S. wine market is approximately $64 billion and the McBride Sisters wine collection is looking to capture their fair share of the market. With an investment of only $1,800 in 2005 to start the business and cover licensing paperwork, the McBride Sisters were able to rake in an impressive $5 million in 2020 alone, becoming a global brand in an industry dominated by men. But the road to building their business has been very complicated due to heavy reliance on the gatekeepers. These are the wholesalers, distributors, retailers, and other powers to be that must green light your wine product before it goes into production. Aside from the apparent discrimination, another major challenge for the sisters was the lack of investors or advisors willing to step in and assist. But despite not having seed money or mentorship, the sisters leaned in on their problem-solving skills. Under-resourced and understaffed, the McBride sisters innovated around ways to engage their customers and launching products that resonated with their base. For example, in 2018, 
They launched Black Girl Magic to honor black women and as a celebratory wine collection sourced from some of California's finest wine growing regions. Their other very popular wine collection, She Can, is an award winning premium spritzer collection that is packed into a can, which came about as the McBride sisters wanted to find a way to evolve drinking occasions, taking it away from corkscrews and glasses. Because there aren't many women in the industry, and definitely not women of color, the McBride sisters are leading by example and are dedicated to cultivating diversity in the community. Their entire office in Oakland is all female. Both of their winemakers in California and New Zealand are women, and their sales team is all female. Andrea and Robin have certainly opened a lot of doors, but they are also committed to leaving them open for other ambitious minorities to come through. To that end, Andrea and Robin launched the She Can Fund in 2019 and have invested more than $3 million to help close both the gender and race gap in the food and wine industry. They launched a new initiative that funds professional development scholarships and grants for women in agricultural programs at Southern University and HBCU in Louisiana. It's heartwarming to hear a fairy tale like story that helped form the McBride Sisters Wine Company. Andrea and Robin took advantage of the opportunity to not only celebrate their sisterhood, but also seized on the opportunity to create a line of wines for black women and the black community as a whole to enjoy. The most important thing that they have learned is the power that's in community. When they felt they didn't have any real support in the wine industry, they continued to network and align with other African-American women who were pioneers and leaders within their own respective industries. Their support, advice, and excitement around their brand has been instrumental to the McBride sisters reaching the level of success that they see today. I lost my, uh, my mom and you know, we lost our father and, you know, it was, you know, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> it was my sister. As the two got to know one another, they discovered a shared passion for making wine, something they each developed growing up in the major wine regions of New Zealand and Central California. We had these dreams and had we not met, we probably wouldn't be in the wine industry, but we kind of felt like the stars lined up. 16 years later, their banner now distributes wines to major grocery chains across the country. For Andrea and Robin, the company's success feels like the culmination of their journey as sisters. The world brought us together, we're invincible, we can do anything. And for that, they're both grateful to a father they never really knew. So when life gives you lemons, make, make wine. wine. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>